Hey everyone, so let's talk game streaming. The idea that you can access all the latest games via the cloud with titles hosted on remote servers and video beamed over the internet to the client device of your choice. Smartphone, tablet, micro console, flat panel TV. Now back in the day, companies like uh, OnLive and Gaikai tried to bring this concept to the mass market, but it failed pretty badly, owing to poor image quality and sometimes astonishing lag. I mean, we measured anything up to 300 milliseconds latency on some on live titles. Not good. But infrastructure has improved, latencies are now lower, picture quality is better, and with the arrival of 5G cellular, there's potential here. Potential to run a viable cloud system that allows you to game wherever you want, practically instantly. No downloads, no patches, no need to even physically own a console or PC. So principally today I'm going to be talking about two systems. We've actually been hands-on with Google's Project Stream, currently hosting a very early beta test using Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And yup, that's actual stream gameplay you're looking at here. It's a fascinating early demo and we can stack it up against the PC games, the consoles, and we can get some idea about lag. Anyway, there's also Microsoft's xCloud on the horizon. This was announced a while ago, but the key idea here is pretty straightforward. Xbox One S hardware has been repurposed into multiple instance Blade servers and will be integrated into Microsoft's Azure cloud data centers. Now, why Xbox One S and not the more powerful X? Well, this is pretty straightforward. We should expect xCloud to be a 1080p based streaming system. So, X is essentially overkill. We also need to bear in mind that data centers operate with efficiency first and foremost. Power consumption and heat need to be carefully managed. So yeah, Xbox One S is just a better fit here. Take your Xbox games anywhere then. Now, it's too early to judge image quality or latency here, but I like the idea. But for a new system to take off, it needs a big catalog of titles. And this is an advantage that Microsoft has. The Xbox One has five years of gaming to tap into. Combine it with Microsoft's Game Pass subscription service. And well, you can see where we're heading here. The holy grail for the platform holders, Netflix for games. The big drawback is actually highlighted in Microsoft's own video here. I just don't think those tablet touchscreen controls will cut the mustard while the weird kind of claw effect thing used to attach your phone to an Xbox pad looks somewhat unwieldy. My guess, Microsoft will launch a Switch style client device with Wi-Fi and 5G cellular support. Let's talk Google and Project Stream. So I've been hearing a lot about this behind the scenes now, assuming that Stream is indeed based on the project that's internally codenamed Yeti. And this is something that Google won't actually confirm. But you know, that said, it seems highly unlikely that two game streaming projects would be developed in parallel. So yeah, I think this is Yeti. Anyway, we're looking at Assassin's Creed Odyssey here, the subject of the first early test. And before we go any further, I think it's important to stress that we have no real idea of the extent to which this may be representative of actual system performance. What I can tell you with some degree of certainty is that Yeti is a bespoke platform Google is developing based on Linux and using the Vulkan Graphics API. It's going to be tied in pretty closely with the YouTube infrastructure and you should expect to see some fascinating integration there. So just off the top of my head here. Imagine being able to watch someone playing a game and one button press later, you're playing it yourself. Maybe even playing the same game area you were just watching. Those are just a couple of the ideas I've heard, but well, the final product, just have to wait and see. In the meantime, we have Assassin's Creed Odyssey here. And yes, it's Assassin's Creed Odyssey. The question is still though, what are we actually looking at here? What is Google actually testing with the stream prototype here? I mean, did Ubisoft really pour over the whole game to Linux and Vulkan? And is the game really streaming from Yeti development hardware? Or is it something more straightforward, like a Windows server running a slightly customized version of the PC game with locked settings, which is in turn attached to Google streaming infrastructure? So yeah, despite being actually able to play the game, capture it and show it to you today, there's still a lot of uncertainty here over what it is that we're actually testing. 
So bear that in mind as we take a closer look at the Project Stream beta here. So we'll kick off with an Xbox One X head to head here and it certainly looks as though we have effective feature parity in terms of the visuals. Draw distances and detail look the same. Popping is very similar indeed as is anti-aliasing. However, the stream visuals do suffer from some macro blocking, which is down to the video compression. And then there's also color banding in the sky there. Again, this is down to the video compression. By and large though, in terms of what the server itself is actually doing, stream is holding up well here against the current console champ. PC at ultra high is our next step. And again, quite similar indeed. Again, detail levels look very close indeed, and shadow popping is practically identical between the two systems. The volumetric clouds do appear closer to the PC version here, but this is a dynamic system that can provide different results every time you boot the game. Twice in succession, we didn't get any clouds at all in the stream build, but as you can see here, they're definitely there, so we're not running on the game's low preset here. Let's talk performance next, and this is perhaps the biggest surprise from Stream, which I was led to believe is a next-gen platform. So, yeah, we're looking at 30 frames per second here, and there are some irregular frame pacing issues. A proper 30 frames per second game has 33 millisecond frame times, which would give us a flat line on the frame time graph there. But there is some inconsistency here, and this would be in line with the PC version running with its own 30 frames per second cap. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to test here is latency. We have to do this the old-fashioned way by pointing a high-speed camera at the joypad and having the screen in shot as well. You press the button and then count the number of frames until the resulting animation kicks in on screen. We're using a 120 frames per second camera capture here, so there's like a 8.3 millisecond window of error. But the more measurements you take, the more you home in on the likeliest lag measurement. Display latency, yes, this is included in the total. So we're using an LG C8 here, which has around 21 milliseconds of added lag. But anyway, this measurement here, I'd say, is a representative. And between button press and on-screen animation, I count 24 frames from that 120 frames per second capture. 24 multiplied by 8.3 gives you 200 milliseconds. Can knock off 20, 21 milliseconds there for the screen, gives you 180 milliseconds then, which is not great. But that measurement on its own isn't particularly relevant because of course, the game itself has lag. So we need some kind of control, some kind of comparison. And that's where the PC version comes in, running locally. Uh, because we can measure this running on the exact same screen. Let's start with the game running at 30 frames per second then, effectively operating at the same speed as the stream demo. The measurement that comes back consistently from our camera feed is 16 frames, or 133 milliseconds, including display lag. That's not exactly great for a local measurement, but it ties in with a lot of 30 frames per second readings we've taken in the past. And of course, Assassin's Creed isn't exactly known for its super fast response. So like for like then, Stream adds 66 milliseconds of latency. Now let's take a look at the PC game running locally again, this time at 60 frames per second. Running a game at a higher frame rate always results in lower input lag, and the most consistent result we get back this time is 12 frames, or 100 milliseconds. So when you stack up the three latency readings, the results are fascinating. Running Odyssey at 30 frames per second rather than 60 adds 33 milliseconds of latency, and running Odyssey on the cloud adds 66 milliseconds of lag. From what I've heard of Google's latency targets, we should be expecting better on the final product. But there is a further wrinkle to this tale. We did the same latency test with the Xbox One X version, both at 1080p and 4K output. The results there were the same and they are intriguing. 20 frames end to end, meaning that stream adds just 33 milliseconds here. But I've got to stress that Odyssey on stream here is just a demo, a very early demo. And yeah, we have no real idea, again, about what Google is actually testing here. Is it on actual server hardware or is it something else? We don't really know to what extent this is actually representative of any kind of final product. But I do wonder whether 60 milliseconds is what we're going to get, and not just on Google's system. Remember back in the day when Sony added PlayStation 4 games to PlayStation Now, its own cloud platform? 
we ran local versus cloud measurements. And yeah, a lot of the results came back with a 60 to 70 millisecond lag penalty. Sounds familiar, right? And yeah, take a look at this extensive latency analysis of several streaming systems from Battle Nonsense. Great stuff here, full link in the description. I urge you to check it out. But the bottom line here is that you see a kind of 70 millisecond lag penalty that seems to be kind of consistent across different platforms. So I think there's a hell of a lot for these cloud systems still to prove. GeForce now produces a decent enough experience by running at a high frame rate to offset the network lag. But Project Stream, certainly based on this demo, isn't doing that. And it's highly unlikely that xCloud will either. So yeah, I still think we're missing that one last push, that final technological breakthrough that will make these systems really work. But that's where I'm gonna leave things for now. Come on, everyone, you know the score by now. Please like and subscribe to support our work. Ring the bell for instant notifications. And yes, please do consider supporting us via the DF Patreon. Helps so much. And of course, you get to see all of our videos in pristine quality. But that's all from me for now. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end, if indeed you did. And well, just generally, thanks for watching.